There's nothing more momentum killing or crushing than dealing with a run injury. Often they occur at the absolute worst times, right before a big race in the thick of your build up to all the training and the hard work you've put in. Or maybe you're a new runner and you get hurt and you make the tragic assumption that running just isn't for you. And you move on to try to do something else and you miss out on all this incredible fitness. And look, injuries kept me out of some of my biggest races, including the Kona Ironman World Championship and the Boston Marathon. It drove me to what I do today. And just because injuries are common, I've realized it doesn't mean they actually have to happen. So today I'm bringing in our new coach and physio, Brad, to help me with our decades of experience getting runners out of injury to help you with our four key bulletproof strategies, starting with number one. So the first thing we need to discuss is training low. The biggest mistakes I see that happen is if runners start off at a run volume that's just too much for their body and their mechanics to handle, or they're making jumps that are just too big. And these are understandable because a lot of times if you're training for a race, you might jump into a plan that has these progressions built in, but they're not built for you. They're built for some mythical version of you who's got perfect mechanics and incredible strength and knows how to handle themselves without breaking down or injury. So the golden rule is this, we cannot advance our running and our training beyond what our body can handle. That's it. We just have to listen and pay attention. And sometimes that means doing a lot less volume than we might think. I learned a lot as a triathlete, expanding my notion of run volume beyond just the run mileage into biking and swimming and other forms of cross training and strength. And when I stitched that thing together, my run volume was low, but I was running and training at a really high level. So don't go beyond what your body can handle with your strength mechanics, which Brad is gonna get into next, and expand your notion of training load beyond just the miles themselves. Yeah, thanks, Nate. Strength and mobility, so important. You will never reach your full aerobic potential unless you're full body strong. Now, many of my athletes tend to miss out their strength, mobility, and conditioning stuff when they're time crunched. Now, if this happens, it tends to set up an environment where injury can take place because what's happening is you're not really working on efficient, strong movement patterns, which can then create that environment for injury. Now, mobility simply means strength and control through range, and that's exactly what what you need if you want to be an efficient runner and minimize that risk of injury. Now, some of my favorite go-tos when it comes to strength and mobility training is first of all, the posterior chain work. And I always start off with phase one. Phase one is the bridge work, where you just lie on your back, heels close to the butt, <clears throat> lift, up and squeeze the glute and then progress from there from double to single leg work and then to add a little bit more instability and a little bit more muscle firing around that we look at introducing the swiss ball the swiss ball hamstring curl double legs single leg work bit of heel tap work we're trying to we're trying to control that core so some great progressions there and then we can move on to some full body integrated core work now i just love the front plank, side plank, and back plank work. So with front plank, again, we can progress with lifting the arms, lifting the legs. With the side plank work, we can start off a modified side plank on the knees, lift the leg, and then go into full side plank, where we can again then look at some rotational aspects and some leg lifts to make it even more challenging for that glute med and oblique to maintain control. And then I love the back plank, something that's totally underrated. So back plank, lying on the elbows and then the heels, and then making sure that the glute and hamstrings are really engaged and trying to fire up and breathe independently of that brace. And then bringing it all together. Some kettlebell play, brilliant. Some swings with that lovely hitch from the hip and making sure that we're getting that posterior chain pop through. So the swings are a fantastic exercise to bring it all together in that strength, conditioning and mobility. And then we've also got the curl and press. The curl and press with that little pop, which really helps that full body strength, which helps when you're looking at contact on stride and keeping everything together. So you're putting all the energy and translating you forward rather rather than losing energy and leaking form. And then the final exercise, of course, that single leg deadlift. Fantastic for looking at stability with a soft knee and trying to move that hip through range while maintaining balance and having that extra weight on the upper body. Now for some other ideas and resources in the strength and conditioning space, make sure you check out the Run Experience YouTube channel and the app. Heaps of ideas there from heaps of fantastic coaches. Now over to Nate for the really important part of injury prevention, nutrition, where I'm sure he's going to talk about the power of plants in your nutrition plan. 
Now, I wanna talk nutrition, but to talk nutrition the right way, we first need to talk about inflammation. You see, inflammation is a good thing in the right amount of doses. It's the response that triggers in our body when we get sick, when we're very, very stressed, like when we're training right now, and uh, when we're dealing with an injury. But just like stress, if we have too much of it, it can get very, very bad very quickly. And you better believe what we put in our mouths can also affect the balance of inflammation in our body and just by training more and running more you are further inflaming the body and it can easily tip us over the balance especially if we're using all that running and training as an excuse and license to eat whatever we need to counterbalance that with anti-inflammatory foods and this should be pretty easy because these are foods that we know that are good and healthy for us they're ingredients we can recognize and a lot of times they come right from the ground so we want to eat things like fruits and good vegetables like tomatoes and strawberries and berries, good citrus fruits. We want to avoid things like processed carbohydrates and white sugar and white bread. We want to eat leafy greens and vegetables. We want to avoid processed meats, things like that. If we can do that, we can set ourselves up for success and no injuries. Now sleep is simply the performance enhancing agent that's available to us all. We may not be able to train the hours like Olympic and world-class athletes, but you know what? We can eat and sleep like them. If we can sleep with quality, what that will do is allow really good time for adaptation to the training and allow you to be simply the best you can be. So the first tip, try not to snack after dinner. Now snacking after dinner will cause an insulin response. That insulin response will stop the letdown of melatonin which is basically your sleep quality hormone. There's also been some research to show that melatonin is incredibly important for maintaining function and efficiency of the powerhouse portion of your cell, the mitochondria. It also, it's a really important time, that first few hours of sleep, for the letdown of growth hormone, testosterone, which helps with the repairing and rebuilding and adaptation to your training. So if you don't give the right amount of time and justice to that few hours, then your training will be affected negatively and again, you're gonna create the chance for injury to take hold. Tip number two, you really need to try and eliminate blue light before bed. So 90 minutes before bed, turn off the screens, get off them, look at soft lighting, maybe read a book. It's really important to wind down and deregulate before bed so that you're not negatively affecting those hormones that help with quality sleep. And the third tip, make sure your room is dark. Make sure you wear an eye mask if you have to, to keep light out. Dark curtains, have all light sources out of the room. This even means the little blip on the computer. Take that away. There's been studies that have shown even light exposure onto skin can negatively affect your sleep quality. We need to start treating sleep with the respect it deserves. Rather than planning our sleep around our lives, maybe we need to plan our lives and training around sleep. The other really important aspect when it comes to injury prevention is equipment, especially footwear. Now Coach Nate in this next video goes over the difference between minimum, maximum, the cushioning. It's a really good one to watch if you wanna make sure you dial in the right footwear for your feet. Thanks so much for listening. I really enjoyed collaborating with Coach Nate and I hope to see you guys on the next video. Keep running.